So we are recording a new episode. I know it's hard to believe we've only done two this year. And believe it or not, our last episode is actually with the same guest I'm sitting here today. So before we jump into that, uh, just a couple of announcements here. Yeah, we normally don't do releases on Sunday, but this is a special edition. This is something we've definitely hyped on Twitter for a while. When I approached Gianna about doing this, it was not a joke. I don't know if you felt that it was a joke because it was never a joke in my intention. Um, you know, it's kind of spoofing the whole LeBron James thing. May, you know, should be less controversial, but um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to do this. This is a special that we've not done before and I'm really excited to, to kick this off. And one last thing before we do kick it off is be sure to check out the all new episode of Wednesday Night Dash this week at 10 p.m. East on this same YouTube channel or you can check it out over on our, our Twitch channel. We are at Texas Motor Speedway for the Bryant and me Texas 100. So check that out. Yeah, I know Gianna's like, yeah, I know them. <laughs> they're, my, they're my best buds over at yes. Bryant and me. Uh, Brian, yeah, we'll be, uh, Eric will be running the Bryant and me car, which is looking super awesome. So be sure to check that out. So uh, Gianna Belcastro is here with me, the host of Women's Sports Matter podcast. We did a 10 minutes with back in February. Um, you know, we're, Gianna's back, getting ready to start the new season and announcing a college decision. Decision. So Gianna, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Like, I didn't even think it was a joke either. I also think it's like a really cool thing. But part of me is like, do people really care where I go to school? <laughs> That's like the one thing. <laughs> but also at the same time, it's it's a fun thing to do. And maybe if people that like follow my pod or even just follow on Twitter, they'll maybe be like, oh, wait that's like actually cool or I didn't know that they were still in school or you know stuff like that so I'm just I'm excited to do this and then my family can have this little thing as well you like go. yo I was on a show here you go made, made but, the decision public because I know when I announced my college decision I actually had a, a similar story where I started at a kind of a two-year school and then transferred to Purdue far less ceremony, you know, you know, pomp and circumstance. It was just kind of a, Hey, let's do this and get it over with. And I actually had like, I decided two weeks before the semester started, I was going, uh, and that was very complicated and somehow, it worked. but you know, that's not about me. Uh, the women's sports matter podcast, you finished your season season three previously. Is that correct? Yeah. In February, February, and you've taken yeah. some time off, but you're getting ready to start season four back in, in the summer. So tell us a little bit about that. What's coming up. There is so much going on. Um, I am going to a convention in July. So hopefully I I'm applying, but I know that I'm going to probably get it. So live podcast part two oh, yeah. at the same place uh, in Rosemont, Illinois. So oh, nice. fan expo. So I'm excited for that. I added someone new to my team. So it was just me before. Oh. And now I'm adding another person. His name is Derek Helling. He is from Chicago. He is going to be my women's sports betting analyst. He oh, gets nice. his own little segment on the show. It is sponsored by Bet Her. Did see that? Which Congratulations! That's awesome. Women's sports betting uh, platform. Thank you very much. And so, each week with every episode, we're gonna talk about what's going on that week <laughs> in terms of women's sports betting, how to bet correctly, and you know, education on it as well. Because I don't want to, I don't want to just be like, "Hey, you can bet on women's sports." We're also telling people like, you know, people have a gambling problem as well, and if mm -hmm. you have a problem you can get help and here's the resources for that. Absolutely. So just overall, like I'm very happy about having another sponsorship. This is my second one. Um, in the works of trying to get the same sponsor that I had last year, sponsoring some more episodes. Um, let's see what else I'm starting on May 17th. That is the week that I graduate from my community college. Cause I was like, I need to do it where I, I need to start it now, but also at the same time, I need to finish school. So I feel like that's perfect. It's finals week. Um, I'm just excited to start up again. People are excited. So I'm glad to see that. My newsletter newsletter is going very well. Absolutely. Um, got like 40, 
43 subscribers, which is like huge for me. Hey, so, you know what? It's, you know, we've been collecting names for a newsletter for five years. I have sent out exactly zero emails. So <laughs> you're already way miles ahead of, of where we are. I'm trying to think what else do I want to, I, I will announce it here since this is a very special show, you know, um, Women Sports Matter is going through a rebrand. Oh, yeah. Wow. So I'm not gonna, I... not gonna spoil too much because I want to keep some stuff under wraps. But um, new logo. I'm making a website. I literally bought um, womensportsmatter.com. So that's right. my that's my website. And um, one of my friends from high school is helping me design my new logo and. Uh, we just started doing that, so hopefully by July, August, we can have that. And then um, it's going to be great. There's going to be my newsletters on the website, transcripts for every single one of my episodes. So people that maybe don't want to sit through podcast or um, can't listen to them will be able to read through the episodes and some of my interviews. And um, maybe adding more stuff on there, like maybe a little blog section instead of uh, just having my newsletters there. And I'm, I've been applying to be a part of the, some like media for different sports teams. So I signed up for media emails recently. So that's going to help with my coverage. And hopefully I can attend Sky and Red Stars games as a media member nice. trying to do that. So Rem- <laughs> trying really me, hard, but remind me when we hit stop, I, I have something I want to talk to you about related to that. Yeah. So so yes that's awesome all right um, i think that is it in terms of news i have some interviews lined up not gonna spoil that but they're really great so nothing like a good cliffhanger right there yeah you, you just have to listen on, to the show keep people on the edge of the seats they come yeah. expecting a, a college decision here and then they get a cliffhanger <laughs> for your upcoming season that's that's the perfect way to a lot it. of great guests i i will say so i'm excited that's that's really cool um it's you know and and the other thing too that you're doing that i think a lot of people are in the podcast world in general are just starting to get is the whole seasons concept and yeah before i was just pump them out pump them out pump them out and then you know you do that for a while and then you just burn out and you're just like okay i i'm done with this for a while and uh and then you know usually after it stops it never starts again and by by creating that that finite season, taking some time off, starting the following season, continuing it up, you know, you you, it, it's pacing yourself. Like that is the perfect way to do it. And it's like you know they they argue about well if you're not publishing weekly or or biweekly, whatever you do, people aren't going to consistently. No, that's not true. If you are publishing in in seasons, and you take some break and say I'll be back in June for June to August or whatever the next season is, people will come back. You know the fans are loyal podcast fans are very very loyal you know you structure that schedule you stick to it they will come back so there's my two cents for the listeners today with that uh pace yourself so on that note let's let's move on to the reason why we're having this episode today you mentioned you're in community college you you, you want to share where that is and and you know why you know what what drove your decision here to go to not just what the college is yet, but why, you know, your career path, you know, you're finishing community college, you're moving on to a a four-year school to finish up. Talk about that a little bit. Why, you know, how did that start and work out for you? So I go to College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. God State. Sorry. Woo. No, (laughs) Um, but I've been going there for like two years. Um, so originally I was, you're not going to like this. I was supposed to go to Indiana university. <sighs> yeah. Um, for, you know, they got, they got some good journalism stuff there. Okay. Yeah. I was going to go for sport marketing and management. And then it was still in the middle of the pandemic. They didn't give me any money. My choices weren't that great. It was between Dayton, which I didn't even get into my major, which is like a big, <laughs> It's basically like a big F you to the, to the person that applied. Like, oh, you can go here, but you just didn't get in your major. Okay. You, you can start as a gen ed. Maybe, you know, when the first bunch fail out at the semester, you can yeah. pop in then. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. 
and then it was between Loyola, Dayton, and Indiana. And I was like, well, Indiana is like the biggest name, you know, maybe, maybe I'll get something out of that. And then like a month later, I was like 50,000 a year and we're gonna be living in our dorms and doing school from there. I can do mm. that literally from home. Mm. So Yikes. I was so against going to community college. Like I had, I had such a disdain for it that I, I was so against it in high school. I told my mom this, she doesn't remember, but I was like, I'm either going to end up at Dayton or COD. I guess I was right. Um, so, but I am such a huge fan of community college. I think it is such a great choice, especially if people don't know what they want to do. Oh, for sure. Get your gen eds out of the way. That's the smart decision. That's what I did. Um, so I'll be graduating next month, which is like exciting, but also like, Oh my God, I gotta, I gotta move on now and get out of the state. And, but you know, online school, mostly I've had, I think it's been four in-person classes now out of the many, many that I've been taking over these past two years, but it, it's a good education and I don't have anything against my school. Granted, like I don't go to any school events because there is still a pandemic and like, I'm not even going to my graduation because there's so many kids, there's gonna be so many kids graduating. And it's like, I don't, Uh, I don't want to be a part of that and wait. That seems like such a terrible decision. (laughs) Yeah. Fair. Uh, That's absolutely fair. And I'm also working the night. I'd rather get paid than Uh, pay Mm. for a row, like a cap and gown and have to sit there. But yeah, I, I mean, overall, it was a good experience, and people should definitely consider community college as an option. Even though, absolutely. like, my big thing also was like, oh, I'm missing out on so much stuff. Not in the middle of a pandemic, you're not missing out on anything. So yeah. that's what happened, basically. And, and you know, to I, I like I said, I, I went through a very similar path that you're going through. You know, I went to a, a Purdue regional campus that happened to be in my hometown and get some of that out of the way, uh, because honestly, my parents felt that if I went right to four year school and I went away from home with all the temptations of everything a, a four year college campus has that I would be back home in, in a semester or two trying to figure out what I'm going to do next, because I, I would have failed out academically and I hope my parents don't listen to this. They were right. Um, I'm only saying that one time, and I will never say that again in my life. But that that it it, it is true. Um, you know, I'm almost 37 years old now, and I, I you know I'm still an idiot. But man, me at 18 years old, holy crap! If I would have went right to four year school, it would have been bad. Who knows where what I'd be doing today or where I would be? You know that even adjusting into the, you know, the two-year environment was tough for me, but if I wouldn't have gone through that and, you know, the motivation to, to work myself to get through those first handful of classes and then transfer to the finish up at the four-year school, it, it never would have happened for me. I mean, I even struggled transferring. Like I had a rough first semester, uh, first semester and a half, um, but yeah, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with going to the community college system. I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, it, it is a very underrated approach to school. You don't have to run away to your four-year school. I 100% completely agree with that. And I got to do so much here as well. Like I got to finish working with um, the baseball team I produced for. I was there the whole entire season, which was awesome. Being able to experience a full season was great. I got to work. I still work for... Uh, one of the two hockey teams I was at because playoffs time. Woo. So doing that. And then I just got a job with the fire. I'm working tonight. So I do 50, 50 there. It's not, you know, like a big deal, but you know, it's, I want to work in soccer. I get to work in soccer now. So being able to, you know, be here and enjoy Chicagoland sports and be able to work there is just such a great experience. And I think will be helpful in the future, but I've been able to do so much since I've been home. So I, I wouldn't take it back, you know, if I had the option. Yeah. And I mean, everybody that, you know, has built them up in sports, they have the story of, you know, 50, 50 filling popcorn bags, scanning tickets, you know, it's, you got to start somewhere and, you know, you're getting your foot in the door, you know, who knows where that's going to lead. So that's, that's awesome. So, all right. 
So you have made a decision on the colleges. I have. What was the short list? Who, you know, you posted it on Twitter, but for those who didn't see, what, what was the short list? So I applied to, I believe it was seven schools this year. Yesterday I found out that Northwestern rejected me. Oh, I was like, okay. Like I knew it though. I knew it though. I just wanted to see. They don't want me, they're lost. I don't really care. Plus, it's like my most expensive school that I applied to. I got waitlisted from Vanderbilt, which is like a win and a loss. Yeah, some, so. of, some of the most expensive schools, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, Good um, schools, but yeah, they're, they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I applied to Colorado State, uh, Utah, Nebraska, Mizzou, and Minnesota. That was the other. I'm going to guess based on the delay, the answer is not Minnesota. <laughs> I, yeah, I, for, I keep forgetting that I applied to Minnesota. Well, here's the thing. They never right, give me any money. They yeah, ne- oh, yeah. So it's like automatically, no, no. I'm not going to go somewhere. I learned my lesson. Okay, so Don't go not, anywhere with no scholarship money. Not it's not, Minis- no. not Minnesota. Okay, so we, we've gotten that far so far. <laughs> not Minnesota. So- <laughs> So before we, we do the unveiling, so what, what kind of went through your head when you, you made this decision? How, how did you, I mean, obviously money, you know, financial yeah. aid, that's obviously a, a huge factor, but was there anything else as far as that, that went into this final decision? Um, how close it is to home because my family. So across Utah and Colorado State. <laughs> my family cares so much about how close, <laughs> mostly my mom. She's like, good thing she's not home and she can't hear me right now <laughs> talking about this. But I know she's going to miss me. And I'm, I'm the first kid in my intermediate family to go away. Me and my cousin are leaving this year. My cousin's going to Michigan State. And so they're also waiting for me to be like, get out of here but also like stay close enough Mm. so but it was I okay so here's another thing for next season of my show I made what I'm calling a podumentary and it's literally me talking out you know basically to myself um because I really needed that like how I'm gonna make my college decision I'm like oh maybe people who are struggling or even for my family like how did I pick where I'm Mm. going to school and it was just like this long it's been since it, the winter time, I think January, I've been recording to now. I literally added some, like a few minutes yesterday, just talking about how I make my decision. It's based off a lot of things. Of course, I think money is the biggest part. Um, the closeness factor isn't important for me, but it's important, you know, how to get home. Can you get home without, you know, airline tickets being a lot of money? Sure. Um, is the school atmosphere good? Do we like that? Do we like the energy, the vibe it gives off? Um, is the the school that you're going to going to help you in the future? Are the majors there? Like you have a wide variety of choices. So I was like, this is a very difficult decision as well because this is my third year applying to schools and I actually need to leave. Like I can't, I can't stay. It's basically. time to go. I have to go. <laughs> there's no more there's no more community college like I need to leave and get my bachelor's and I don't know what happens after that but so it was a very 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 hard process literally made the decision like two days ago I thought I made it I thought I made it three days ago (laughs) I was like I was so wrong and I was like no I can't do this Uh, and then all these thoughts running through my head like oh my god I have to leave but also like where am I gonna go and you know decision day is well I guess today if you're watching on on May 1st but here you go so let's let's have it where will you be going to school so which will be a surprise to many people um I'm not going to Mizzou that was actually the place three days ago that I thought I was going I was for sure I for sure thought you know I was gonna go to Mizzou I was gonna study journalism but I'm not I am wow. going to the University of Nebraska. Wow. Yeah, to study, yeah, to study advertising and PR, maybe double major with That's sports fantastic. media. So overall, it, it came down to the School of Communication at Nebraska, which is like, I could go on and on about the different majors I could mix and match. And there's four different majors in there. 
that's the advertising and PR, broadcasting, journalism, and sports media. And it's just so perfect for me that I could do basically whatever I want and just use up all the resources that Nebraska has. It's also a Big Ten school, so I'm going to try and get involved in women's sports somehow, like student managing. I already started the process of that. That's um, awesome. I, I have to like get into it because I, I got to prepare, got to get my classes ready. Um, I'm just super excited. I've never been to Nebraska. So <laughs> I've always like talk crap about people that have never been to the school that they're going to last year. Um, when I thought I was going to Loyola, I've committed to five schools, by the way, in the past three years. Oh, so there's um, a chance this could change. No, <laughs> see, that's what my family says. I'm like, no, the deadline's literally tomorrow. Um, no, I don't have that many choice, like options left here, but no, I'm really confident this time. Like that's I awesome. swear. So you are going to be a corn husker. Awesome. Bread. C- congratulations. That is, Thank that's you. awesome. So uh, we've got the, we'll have a big 10 rivalry here going and yeah. um, you know, that's, there's a lot of opportunities. It's a great school. I mean, the, obviously the big 10 would not have poached them if they, they weren't. Uh, and it was obviously for more than the football because their <laughs> football hasn't been great in 20 years, but oh, yeah, that's, I that's beside the point. It, yeah. <laughs> So there's a, there's a big 10 rivalry in my family now. So my cousin's going to Michigan state. I will have two cousins next year at Purdue. Um, and I got a lot of friends at Purdue, some friends at Iowa, got the uh, folks at final third go to Minnesota. So we're, we're rivals now. There we go. Yeah. My Um, my wife went to Michigan state. So it's, you know, we've got a big 10 rivalry in this household. (laughs) We actually have in our, our, our bedroom, uh, next to our bed we have one of those split household it's one of those mm-hmm. license plates and it's actually works perfectly because you know my side of the bed is the purdue side and then her side of the bed yeah. is the michigan state side so that's awesome. but yeah that's that's awesome congratulations um you know you're going to be heading out in what august yeah so um august 18th is my move-in day and i made it that way because uh here's also another thing so the baseball team i work for the king county cougars uh, no one knows this i don't even know if i'm allowed to say this but i don't know how many people listen to the show that live in uh around king county but <laughs> thanks <laughs> um i don't know if there's people over there like aurora geneva st charles naperville i don't know how many people there are, are gonna go to a cougars game but um, I'm creating my own like theme day at the Cougars on, oh, wow. and it will be on the 17th and it's women's sports day. Very cool. So I'm planning all of that. Going to invite some local Chicago teams and show off women's sports. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And you can follow along with that on my personal account. I don't think I'll show off on my podcast account, but <laughs> Cause I don't think my, my podcast will have a booth there. Cause I, I don't know yet, but hey, you know, I mean, it, it was King County. I, you know, I've been to a few of those myself when I lived there and you know, I still, my favorite baseball story ever was the uh, skunk running out of the tarp <laughs> during, uh, during play and just complete chaos ensuing. And, you know, for you watching on the video, the, it was like the shortstop of the, the other team. I think they were playing like Burlington. And the shortstop is standing there with his jersey like this. And I'm just like, dude, if that thing sprays you, holding your shirt over your nose is not going to help. <laughs> There's been some wild stuff in, in King County, for sure. <laughs> for sure. There, I've, I've seen some, some stuff, but yeah. It's, it, well, it's, it's quite fun t- to work there and everything, uh, especially working behind the scenes because you see more than, you know, just on the field. So it, it's, it, it's a fun time. Yeah. Minor league baseball is really an underappreciated. Thing. Independent, I mean, independent, independent. Yes, thing. independent. True. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're still affiliated with the Diamondbacks. I think. No. No, not anymore. No, that was. So oh, I like to right. say that I interned for a minor league baseball team, and now I produce for an independent baseball mm. team because the switch happened in 2020. That, that's right. So. I forgot they did that whole minor league yeah. thing. Yeah. Because, I mean, in Kane County, they were the Cubs for a while, then they were the Diamondbacks. And... Like seven teams, I think, they were yeah, affiliated just... with. 
but yeah, it's just independent baseball. Go support it. The tickets are cheap and it's, it's a they lot are of fun. Very cheap. They are very cheap. It's a lot of fun. They have theme nights. As, as you mentioned, go, go support your local independent baseball club. Absolutely. We're getting a, we're getting one of the people from the office this year oh. for office night and the VIP sold out in like two days. Is it, so was it, was it Stanley? Yes. Yeah. He just did one at, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. My brother tried to get tickets and they, they were gone in like 20 minutes after they went on sale. So that's usually our biggest night is awesome. the office night. Literally like almost sold out. Our biggest crowd is Amazing. usually that one. So that's it's just really so hectic though. Perfect. So hilarious. I love it. But, yeah. So I think it's time to wrap this up uh, again. Gianna, you are moving to Lincoln, Nebraska. I am. You be a corn husker. That's so yes. cool. So congratulations. Thank Continued you. success on on uh, women's sports matter and your college career and your career in general. So um, again, thank you for your your continued support of our site. And uh, you know, like I said, good luck. Thank you. So you want to hype your social media before we? I gotta, uh, I gotta hype myself. Uh, this is always my favorite part. <laughs> Well, I'm going to hype this up. I actually just co-hosted uh, Bryant and Me without Bryant and Me. That's what we're calling it. Me and Robbie Rogers. Um, but Thomas doesn't doesn't know that yet. And I know he didn't want, he did not want Robbie on there. But we did not talk about LSU. Well, we touched on it briefly. <laughs> but um, so I don't know when that's going out. But if you follow Bryant and Me, I will give them a shout out. I just hosted one of their episodes and, for yeah, this week so and they're sponsoring our race this week so yeah come, come and see the brian and me nascar it's <laughs> it's I'll, I'll have to show you the picture when we we go stop we haven't publicly okay. unveiled it but you, you're gonna love this it's hilarious i cannot wait to see it and then also you can follow my personal social media i'll just give the twitter because instagram is really boring it's just gianna bel castro no spaces no nothing it's just my name just my name well, We'll have it in the, the description of this episode. Yeah. Click on it, go go follow. And then let's see, my podcast, so many different handles, Facebook, Twitter, it's the same one. It's at WSM Podcast. And on Instagram, you can follow me at Women's Sports Matter. Also YouTube, Women's Sports Matter. Um, link tree in my bios will show you basically all my links. Sign up for my newsletter. That's the top one. Um, it's a monthly newsletter talking about women's sports not bothering your inbox that's why it's once a month um that's my thing with newsletters is that they're they happen so often and it's like go away you, you just get zone out. them out yeah so just that's why out. it's once Don't a month yeah highlight and everything that happened yeah awesome. and then listen to my show may 17th basic little intro episode and then my podumentary is the week after that and then interviews start so there you go so very exciting stuff check that out so we're going to go ahead and wrap this uh, this episode up. Uh, I don't know when we'll record again. We just record as people want to. So <laughs> it's, we're, we're becoming on-demand recording. So yeah, um, yeah we're transitioning. Out, you know, as, as people have seen, we've done a lot of video. We're going to continue to push into the video sector and, and other content uh, this this year. So we've got a lot of, a lot of exciting things planned. So uh, check us out at stadiumscene.tv, at Stadium Scene on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, TikTok, and at Stadium underscore scene on Instagram. And we'll see you whenever we record again.